Alrighty. Hoorah, and welcome back. It's only been, what, um, <laughs> two and a half years? Hey, buddy. So, let's see. Where were we last? Um, we hopped on a tram, did a bunch of stuff, uh, and... It, yeah, we were just about heading down to the Anomalous Materials Labs, I think. You know, somewhere thereabouts. Like, I remember we were in some sort of science place where there was, like, a, you know, a bunch of offices and... Yeah, I guess this all vaguely seems familiar. Still, yeah, it's been a while. Giving me some time to sort of reevaluate the role of silent protagonists and things. I guess I'll fill in my thoughts when we have some space. Because in the meantime, we're about to see someone very important. It's ready! You must go! Now! Go. Oh yeah, look who it is. Missed him by that much. Still, perhaps we might be able to hop in the... Nope. No, you gotta be a little quick on that one. Let's try it again. Mission accomplished. We successfully hunted down the Freeman. Unfortunately, you know, stable timelines and all, so the game will allow us to consider that an ending. Although, if we can't go through that portal, what other option do we have? I guess we can just, you know, dither around until a solution presents itself. Hmm, I wonder if you could maybe consider this a boss fight almost, like, um... This is actually the only time in the game where we have to fight the alien controllers, so... I guess maybe? Eh, it's close enough in my book. Anyhow, you know, we're only midway through the game, and yet... Yeah, this is where things are a little interesting. Opposing Force, instead of saving Zen for the end of the game, we are going to be interspersing Zen throughout the game. It's a bit of an interesting direction, and I kind of wish more games in this series did that. Although, it does, um... Well, you know, Zen platforming was never particularly good at the best of times. So, uh, you know, you've got these bounce pads that... Yeah, they don't cushion your landing on the way back down, so... If you jump on them, you better be sure of where you're landing. Like so. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, this game's going to be presenting us with a cool new weapon. It's called the Displacer. And what does it do? Well, it's basically a handheld portal gun. You'll want to stand right at the mouth of the pipe and continue to press forward. Then jump up, and while you're in mid-air, go into a crouch. It's tricky, but you'll find it comes in handy. Oh yeah, yeah, like, um... Every area has its own locations where the displacer can send you to. 
including one where um, it's basically just almost considered a game over, like you just teleport yourself into an endless void. Overall, it's, yeah, it's a cool concept, and, it, well, frankly, Gearbox had all kinds of cool ideas for opposing force. I rather like this version of Zen here. Definitely more interesting to be in the purple dimension than, like, sickly green. I suppose I could have edited out these pratfalls, but I kind of want to impress on you. Uh, Zen platforming kind of stinks. Like, really bad. Like, it, they never were really able to get the whole hang of low gravity jumping. And these things are spaced just far enough apart that it's easy to knock yourself off the edge. Still, though, it's short, and now it's time to get back to business. Crush Depth. Mm-hmm. You know what that means, right? Well, actually, I don't know if you know what that means, given that we haven't even seen what this is. But, well... In general, something that implies water means that you have, well, one enemy, basically. <sighs> Not looking forward to this. Access denied. Yeah. The uh, Hydrofauna Studies Laboratory. I'm afraid I've trapped myself here to escape those beasts. Will you be so kind as to operate that transporter? I suppose it would follow that Black Mesa would have an aquatic laboratory as well. And, you know, canonicity aside, I really do love all the different ideas that, that Gearbox had for this game. They did have a sort of shark tank water testing area in the original Half-Life as well, but nowhere near as expansive as this. Thank you for releasing me. I can help you access any secured area in this lab. A failure of this magnitude is extremely improbable. I certainly hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, short escort sequence. Super short. Almost to the point where it's not really much of a problem at all. Like, you'd have to be going out of your way to fail at it. Can get this under control. Yeah, usually that'd be a hint that you're done with the guy, but there is actually a little something that you can do with him still. You know, if you can coax him along. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So as I was saying, the Half-Life series wants you to be in a certain frame of mind in order to actually really appreciate it. Like, you have to sort of understand that this is a game with a certain dark humor to it. That, you know, it, like not everything is meant to be taken as like, 
oh, it's a horrible tragedy. No, like sometimes, you know, people just get killed in amusing ways and you are supposed to be, you know, laughing at it. The game is, you know, meant to be a little bit on the silly side. It's meant to be, like, somewhat enjoyable. In a dark humor sort of sense. Alright. Let's be getting to back to business. Try to ignore um, all that stuff you saw there. Originally, um, in my first draft of this, I was only going to be um, going up through, sort of halfway through Crush Death, but then I realized, well, that sort of material, like, you only could get like 10-15 minutes out of it, so onward we go. The chapters in Opposing Force are honestly super short. If you know what you're doing, which at this point I, th I think I would, uh, you can accomplish the whole thing in... I would estimate maybe four or five hours, the whole game. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an expansion. Back when, you know, expansions were just basically a substitute for your DLC. I don't know if I've talked about these things. It's been too long, but yeah, these things are part of that whole um, new race of, of aliens that's popping in. The whole race X. We're gonna sort of supplant the aliens that we know and love and become the focal part of the game progressively more and more as we go along. Hey, you know what? This teleporter looks completely stable. Let's press this button. Here. I kind of know how this effect is being done, but still, the illusion is interesting. It really makes you think that, yeah, parts of the environment are just being teleported out. Now it's our turn. Yep. It's kind of interesting, you know. All that that really accomplished was getting us onto the other side of a, a pane of glass, but the effect of it, the whole set piece of it, I think made it a lot more interesting. The Gold Source Black Mesa complex games, like the ones that were set around the Black Mesa disaster, they are at their best when things are just going catastrophically wrong in creative ways. I have a lot of fun watching this kind of thing. I think it's just sort of a reflex. Every time I'm about to dive into water, I always want to be... You know, prepared. It's not that I'm afraid of sharks, I'm just, you know, afraid of sharks. And ichthyosaurs, 
fulfill the requirements of being a shark in basically every single way. Hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe we ought to save these. I would say the game gives us a way too big an arsenal, but you yeah, know what. You can never have too many guns, I'd say. Though so that being said, it's been a hot minute since I've actually gone and used the knife, so... Maybe let's rectify that. Yeah, take that, leeches. Oh yeah, real dangerous enemies. We let them sh really feel our wrath. Yeah. This game, they let you see that you're letting out one of those creatures into the water. Just letting you really know what you're letting yourself in for. Still, that gives us a good chance to show off the other facet of our displacer cannon here. All right, beastie, take that. Uh-oh. If it's not in here, then that means... Ooh, yeah. So yes, the displacer, it fires a... A... I guess what you would call a... A concentrated teleportation ball that sends targets flying, well, who knows where. What's important is it's not here. Seems like it was like a prototype device. You can see some blueprints for it in the previous level, like Friendly Fire. I'll just uh, throw those up on the screen here. And I'm guessing that Nice. I'm guessing that part of the reason why the device never saw widespread use was because of its instability and unpredictability. Though, hmm. You remember that one really big device that we exploded just so we could, like, repel across a gap? I wonder if that was meant to be, like, some sort of central processing unit. Like, uh, I guess the sort of thing you would use to... Oh, shock troopers should mention. We saw these guys once before, and now we have their gun. I believe it's called the Shock Roach. And it is very similar to the Hive Hand from Half-Life 1 in that it's a self-replicating alien weapon that fires its own ammunition. First things first, let's take another jaunt. Interesting. More of a... almost a sunset panorama. These uh, self-inflicted displacer um, trips here are mostly mostly meant to be sort of like resupply runs since they send us to these um, set pieces where there are usually survey team guys sitting around you know dead like with the gear that they brought with them thank you kindly friends your sacrifice will not be acknowledged Oh boy, more of these suckers. Well, barring any other solutions. Yeah, they're just like these free-floating teleportation balls sitting around now. Evidently the experiments have gone in a very unstable direction. Oh well, you know, what can you do? Whole place is going to pieces, and well, 
I'm guessing a lot of these experiments were not designed to be tested under these conditions. Haha. <laughs> yeah, take that. I don't know if this is the intended solution for how to deal with these shark guys. But frankly, anything that doesn't get me in a closed room with them is fine by me. Also, though... Yeah, kind of like the BFG-9000 from Doom, the explosion of the energy ball also has a sort of shockwave to it that harms anything caught near it. Very handy. Yeah, you can hear more ichthyosaurus somewhere around there, but that is not our problem, because we are home free. Good riddance to uh, bad problems. Vicarious reality. Yeah, questionable ethics, but, you know, in a military shooter flavor. This is the Biodome Complex, which as you might imagine means that we're going to be showing habitat research on these Zen creatures. Just a typical thing, like revelation of, yeah, these guys knew what Zen was and they were experimenting on it without a care in the world. And Opposing Force posits that not only do we have these things in jars, but we were also doing ecosystem research. Which seems, you know, like a reasonable supposition. Surprise! Oh yeah, don't get too close to these guys when they're teleporting in because they will telefrag you. Good old old school gaming. Everything is some sort of gotcha. Well, we got some gotchas of our own, I'd say. Come here, friends. Kind of a shame I couldn't catch the big guy. Shock troopers are nasty. Like, the weapons they they carry have actually a decent amount of damage to them, and they leave behind shock roaches that try to get at you like head crabs do. And to round out the new roster, the Voltagors. Legally distinct from the Vortigaunts, mostly because, well, you know, the shots they fire are more like projectiles instead of energy blast. They're a lot less nasty when you have a wide open space to strafe around them, but as you may expect, we won't always have that luxury. Here's a demonstration of the shock roach in action. You may have seen earlier in the video that these things the Gonoms, they took like a whole the several shots from our shotgun before, whereas we were able to just vaporize them in one salvo from the shock roach. Like this thing, for being a reloading weapon with its own ammo supply, like it does a surprising amount of damage. Like it is by no means an emergency weapon. It's a viable weapon all to itself. Not exactly um, comparable to the Hive Hand in that respect, because, you know, the, the Hive Hand had its uses, certainly, but it was also, well, as powerful as you might expect from shooting bees at people. This is not like that. Ooh. Yeah, sort of like an Aurora Borealis sort of situation we're in here. 
You may notice that, yeah, gravity, not always the same in Zen. You don't know really what you're going to expect any time you hop out there. Oh yeah, I see that hatch there. Time for us to be a little bit creative. But we have to be careful. Ladders in this game are treacherous. You don't know precisely how they're going to react when you try to use them. Careful here. Take it very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit of a, a jump scare, basically. Like, you know, you hop onto it and it shatters and you're all like, Oh no, is it going to dump me? It doesn't, but it, it makes you think it could. Oh, another habitat. Definitely very zen-like. Yeah, that sign might be a warning, but... Uh, that This is perhaps more of a, an overt threat. Yeah, try to jump from there at your own risk. We're gonna need to find another way around. be honest like I'd be surprised that why like Shepard would want to be trusting himself to any elevator in this complex at this point the instant I hopped into an elevator around here I'd probably be immediately looking for the emergency escape hatch just because yeah nothing in this whole area works the way it oughta You didn't fool me. I knew there was something waiting. Doof. Yeah. You may have seen the pools there. Like the ones that make a weird humming noise when you step in them. Those are, in fact, healing pools. That game includes them because, well, frankly, there are quite a few cheap thingies that do just uh, take a huge chunk out of your health. Like, falling physics in this game are not very kind. And if you're not careful around here, you can absolutely take a header into this... Uh, little area. Find the tentacles. Yeah. They're about as mean as they've always been. Ah, crap. That could have gone better. Now, what are these fruit here, you might ask? We can collect them, but for what purpose? Well, that's going to slowly reveal itself. This game is not over with handing us alien weaponry. In fact, I sort of glossed over it, but back in that lab, we were able to find ourselves some snarks. You know, like the alien bugs that hop around at everything? Yeah. We get ten of those, and... That's it. That's all the snarks we get. Forgive me if I forget to use them. It's very probable that I won't. <sighs> that is, I won't use them. I won't forget to use them. Or, you know what, never mind.
Ooh, and what's this little fella? Ah, uh, yes. That there is an alien grenade launcher. I don't think that's its actual name, but it, it sort of escapes me at the moment. I'll just post it up here if I end up remembering it. But yeah, it has either a direct firing mode or a, a bouncy mode that's uh, not really good for much of anything. And yeah, you fire it by feeding it the alien fruit, which is, well, just kind of adorable. I love this thing in general. Best part is, the pods that, uh, that dispense these fruit, yeah, they are self-replicating. You could theoretically load yourself up every single time we come across one of these things. I'm not going to, because it's slow and kind of boring, but the possibility is always there. Oh, and, you know, the best part about it is, yeah, it is just a, such a jiggly little thing. And it, it it makes it like really adorable noises, and it, yeah, you can pet the weird alien grenade launcher. Just overall, I love this thing. Hmm. Now these strange motes of light. What are they all about? I suppose we'll have to figure that out once we follow them. Alright, back to conventional weaponry, I'm thinking. I don't know if I've actually commented on whether or not I like the Half-Life shotgun. I do. It's a very good shotgun. Ah, yes, Walter. We were finally able to successfully detach one of the barnacle creatures from its point of gestation. As before, we were still only able to coerce the creature into latching onto organic materials. Unfortunately, the administrator has called me down to the anonymous materials lab this morning for an important experiment, so I don't have any time to further my analysis. Take specimen number 1176 and log anything else you can find. Yeah, yeah, you heard that right. We have ourselves a usable barnacle. And you know what that means? Well, no, I don't know if you would, but yeah. We have ourselves a very primitive grapple gun. I don't know if this is the earliest record of a grapple gun in video gaming, but it, well, it's certainly one of the first ones I ever played with. It's, uh, you know, it's got its ups and downs. For one thing, as stated, it can only latch on to uh, organic matter, so you can't just grappling hook it onto everything. And also, uh, well, the controls for it are a slight bit counterintuitive. Well, let me explain once I've dealt with these guys. Okay, so here's how it works. When you hold down the left stick in order to pull yourself in, then you have to, while still holding onto the left stick, press the right, not the, not the stick, uh, the right mouse button, and then let go of the left mouse button in order to uh, um, unreal yourself. 
okay, but uh, don't accidentally let go of the left click too early because that just completely detaches yourself. And yeah, you eat shit. So yeah, it's, a, it's an admirable effort. Certainly very cool for its time, but you know, it's got issues. Still, yeah, points for trying. Absolutely. Like, that is an idea, like, similar to the rope swinging, where it's like, sure, you didn't quite stick the landing on it, but giving, giving it a good old college try is still worth it. Like, instead of just keeping to what's safe and reliable. It's this sort of experimentation and attempt to always, you know, raise the bar that really ends up leading to innovation within video game design. So, I, I appreciate it for what it is. Certainly there's a lot to say about what it isn't, but I don't particularly care. It, what it is, is something so cool that, frankly, you know, I can uh, excuse its deficiencies just because, you know, not a lot of people were trying these kinds of things. And you know what? These early experiments is what led to the grappling hooks that we know and love today. So, there's that. That, I think, is just an elevator back to um, where we began. I might be wrong, I didn't try. It doesn't matter, though. We're coming to the end of these labs. And what that means is... Oh, yeah. One last biome, and it's a doozy. And we don't have a convenient rocket engine to deal with these things, so... Yeah, discretion is definitely advised. Hmm... Yeah, they seem to be suggesting that we ought to go up into that hole. And if we try to ignore them and go our own way, then we will discover that... Yep. So, into the breach. Fortunately, the tentacles are, well, exactly like they were before. As long as we don't make any noise, we will be a-okay. We can even creep around and gather a few materials, as long as we keep a wide berth from these things. Still, though, end of the day, we need to get ourselves up through that hole. Yep. <laughs> ah, yeah. Get used to that. We're going to be finding ourselves having to pass through quite a few distances that way. Hey, a radio. What's going on with that radio? Yep, sounds like folks need our help. So, I'll see you guys next time.